Horns up, everybody. It's Tanner with Built Not Bot, and today I'm coming at you with a little bit of a different style build video. I hope you like it. If you're from the Midwest or if you follow FCS football, you've definitely heard of the NDSU Bison. And growing up as a kid, going to Bison games and tailgating with my family were some of my fondest memories. I'm super fortunate and I have an uncle that has a Bison bus and a spot in the tailgating lot and he always invited us up there for game day, and we enjoyed some great food, company, and cold beverages prior to the Bison games. Fast forward several years to the college days, and whether my friends and I would get tickets to the game or just tailgate and then head over to Labby's Bar and Grill to watch it on the big screens there, Bison football was a huge part of our life, and that's what makes this table a fun and exciting project for me because it brings back so many memories from when I was really young, up until college and then after college as well, still following and watching NDSU football. I recently purchased the Shaper Origin, which is a handheld router that has a screen on it and it auto corrects you as you're moving the router around. It basically takes out a lot of the human error and allows you to do really precise cuts. The reason I bought this router was to do projects exactly like this one here. And if you've seen some of my other videos, I've struggled with this tool, and this is the first really big test for me where I'm doing detailed work and not just simple projects. Despite this looking like a smooth operation being sped up by like 50 times the speed, I had a lot of trouble with this again. The tape has been an issue, and I had to relay down more and more tape as I was cutting because when you're making these cuts, you're actually removing some of that tape along the way but I was able to get a really clean logo that I'm super happy with, and it was worth the extra effort. Someday I hope to be able to afford a CNC router in which I can just push a button and let a computer do it all for me while I'm working somewhere else or out on the golf course bombing drives off the tee box. And by bombing drives, I mean slicing the ever-living shite out of it straight into the James River. Thankfully, I'm slightly better at woodworking than I am at golf. Okay, back to the bison table. I had to go through and hog out all of the internal parts of this logo. The shaper allowed me to do the outline, but it's just not set up to do this internal routing. In the CNC world, I think this is referred to as a pocket cut. I had to do this all by hand, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but I just took a lot of extra time to make sure I didn't go outside of those outline areas. Earlier you saw me removing a lot of the bulk material with my track saw. That was because this white oak is so heavy. So now I'm coming back with a flush trim bit to make sure that oval looks nice and clean all the way around. You might notice the darker hues on this top right now and that's because I put some polyurethane all the way around this logo because I'm gonna be inlaying it with black epoxy. And if you've worked with epoxy before, it likes to soak into the grain all around wherever you're pouring it, and this is going to prevent that bleed out. I'm using Total Boat Epoxy here, and I just have it tinted with a matte black mica powder, and I love how this ended up turning out in the end. I'm being careful here not to overfill everything because it's gonna save me a ton of time with cleanup in the end. I'd really like to get licensed to sell logos like this. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should move forward with that process. After going through and topping everything off, the epoxy goes through what I believe is an exothermic reaction. It heats up and that heat creates a lot of bubbles. You wanna make sure to try and get those bubbles out or they'll harden into the epoxy and look really bad. I like to use a torch to get rid of the bubbles. And here's how it looks with all the bubbles popped nice and clean. As the thundering herd marches onward, it's time to start sanding. And sanding, it just sucks. There's no way else to put it. It takes so much time, it's not very exciting but it's a critical part of the build. And to get a nice finish, you gotta sand everything properly. Here you're going to see me water pop the grain. And this just allows the wood grain to stand up again and gives you a smoother finish in the end. If you don't do this, sometimes putting your finish on will water pop it and you'll have a rough surface. So I highly recommend water popping between your sanding grits. Speaking of finishing, I'm gonna be using Rubio Monocoat Smoke on this project. I love using this on white oak because it gets rid of some of those orange and amber colors that sometimes get pushed through when working with oak in your projects. It leaves the wood looking really light, natural, and I just think it's the best option for white oak. 
If you've never used it before, you're gonna get really nervous when you first start layering it on because it looks like white paint, but you can buff it off and it just kind of fills and highlights the grain a little bit. It doesn't actually leave it white. This is a little bit wasteful, but I found using the blue shop rags works the best for buffing off this finish. Just grab a dozen rags or so and just keep buffing until you don't get any more of that finish showing through on your rag. One final pass with some microfiber cloths and we're ready to rock and roll. Off camera, I built some steel table legs that I'm going to pair with this. And I think the combination of the natural white oak, the black NDSU Bison logo, and the matte black steel legs just look so good together. I greatly appreciate you watching. I'd love to know in the comments down below if you're a Bison fan or if you hate them. Either way, let me know where you're watching, what your favorite team is, and if you like this build video. We'll see you on the next one.